Hey, good to see all of you. Glad you could join us for our daily devotions. And today we're going to be talking about hope. We just actually heard David preach to us about hope this past Sunday. I mean, it was a great sermon. I hope you were able to listen to it. If not, you can always jump on the app or you can get on our Facebook page and you can see that sermon. I would highly recommend that you go back and listen to that. But when he talked to us about hope, we have to realize that hope is a really big deal. Hope is a universal and powerful human need. It's a deep, deep part of all of our lives. You know, the word hope has a central name or theme within so many different things. It has a, a central mean and name in literature. It has it in a lot of art. It has it in number of films and dramas and plays. It has it in music. It also is a foundational part of a lot of different religions and their prayer. People pray for hope. Actually, even in Israel, the national anthem is called the Hetikva, and that means the hope. They sing about the hope as their national anthem. That's a pretty big deal. So today we're going to talk a little bit about biblical hope versus ordinary hope. And we're going to talk about Jeremiah 29, 11. If you've never read that before, um, I'd be surprised you haven't seen it. Maybe you just didn't recognize it. But the verse says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, this verse is a very, very popular verse. You see it on a lot of coffee mugs, a lot of t-shirts. You see it on wall hangings sometimes. You see it on bumper stickers. But you see it a lot during the time of graduation. You'll see a lot of graduates that get that verse talking about their future and the, the plans that God has for them. So what we want to make sure is that we understand one thing. When you interpret scripture, we got to keep in mind there's a distinction between the passage's interpretation and the passage's application. So there can only be one message, like one interpretation, but there can be multiple applications and truths that the Bible also shows us. So in this context, Jeremiah is speaking to his Jewish brothers and sisters who had been taken by Babylon and captured and Babylon destroyed their temple and took all the, the uh, things that had any value out of the temple. And they took them back to Babylon and they were in exile. And when they're in exile, there's, there's tremendous emotional and physical stress being taken from your homeland. And so these people were worried about what was going to happen. When were they going to go back home? And there was a prophet by the name of Hananiah that came to them, and he was talking to the Jewish people, and he was giving them false prophecy. In other words, he was giving them false hope. He was telling them that in two years' time, that God would release them and bring them back to their homeland. But that wasn't true. And so in Jeremiah 28, the prophet Jeremiah comes to Hananiah and he says this, Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year, you're going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah brought no hope. He brought false hope, actually. And so what Jeremiah had to do is bring the truth to them, which was totally going to, to suck the hope and life out of all of these people. So in Jeremiah 29.10, he writes to the exiles and he tells them, look, it is going to be 70 years, 7-0, before you're able to go back to your land and you're free. But he said, but don't worry. You are God's chosen people, and he has a plan for your life. And his plan is for good, not for disaster. He wants to give you a future, and listen to this, and a hope. See, the real hope comes from the Lord. Hope doesn't come from man. Hope doesn't come from the job that we have. Hope doesn't come from the neighborhood we live in. It doesn't come from our education. Hope doesn't come from our spouse or our relationships, but our hope comes from Jesus Christ. 
All other hope will always fail us because it will end horribly and it won't be able to do and give the hope that Jesus has given to us. And so in this passage, when they're talking about this hope and this plan, yes, you know, Jesus has a plan for us and our hope is in Christ, what he did on the cross and how he was raised from the dead. That is where our hope is. Jesus does have a plan for our life. And that plan is that all who believe in him you may walk through turmoil, you may walk through trials, but our hope is that one day we will be fully restored, we will be in relationship with him in eternity in heaven. That is our hope that Christ has given us. And I hope for you that you are living a life that speaks hope and life into the people around you. I hope that you're living a life that shows that you're living with hope in your heart. So in Hebrews 11, 1, it says this, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. And you remember Pastor David was talking about how the, he had the two circles, and in the middle circle, it said hope, the smaller circle, and the faith circle was bigger. And he said faith is definitely bigger, but hope is something that helps us grow in our faith, right? So because of Jesus, hope makes sense, right? It makes sense to us. So we always hope in him and that hope helps us grow in our faith. Isn't that right? So David told this story about his grandson, Owen, and he was talking about how he promised to take him to the zoo. And Owen was, was hoping that they were gonna get a go. And so when David took him to the zoo, now his hope grew his faith because of what he told him he was going to do. And then he followed through and did it. That's what happens for us. Jesus has told us over and over in his word, the things he's promised for us. And he always makes good on his promise. So our hope turns into faith and it grows more and more when Jesus tells us something and his word comes true. So Hope is faith in the future tense, right? We hope for something that is going to happen. So our hope is faith in the future tense. I love that saying. That's awesome. So it says this in Titus 3, 7. So that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You heard that, right? You see that. So our hope is becoming heirs to God and with God in eternal life in heaven. Yes, we have hope in this world and we live with hope because we know this world is gonna be full of disappointments and hurts and things sometimes that we can't control. But our hope isn't in the job that we just lost. Our hope isn't in the health that is not well because we have cancer. Our hope isn't not in any of those things, but our hope is in Jesus, our hope is in the future that we will spend eternity with Christ. So I hope today that if you're struggling with anything, there's something going on in your life, that your hope is helping to drive and grow your faith because you know that you can trust in him. And when Jesus says, I will be with you, I will walk through the storms, whatever you need, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, I am with you and I hope that you will hold on to those promises of God that one day as a believer, you will spend eternity with him in heaven. But in the meantime, Jesus will always be with you. The Holy Spirit lives within you, will guide you, will show his presence to you, and will give you strength for day-to-day -day living. Hey, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that your word is always true. You never leave us, you never forsake us, you never lie to us. The things you promise us come to fruition. Father, we thank you that we can trust you in every day. May the hope of Jesus live in us that others might see it. May your hope overflow from our hearts into others that they might come to trust in you. God, if there are people here today that are struggling with their hope and their situation, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak into their lives and give them the courage, give them 
the understanding and give them the hope that they need in you and in your word. Father, we love you and we thank you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining. We hope you guys have an amazing week and we'll see you tomorrow.